everyone. Welcome back. Today, I thought maybe I should get back to some of the basics. I need to get back to some of those things that I started doing some of. I just kind of never got around to doing them again. What am I talking about? Well, you guys know my love affair with those incredible little invertebrates known as isopods. I absolutely love them. I've got all sorts of species around me here. I enjoy working with them. I enjoy setting up natural styles, vivariums and stuff for them to really see their behaviors and how they would possibly mimic like they would in the wild. But isopods, there's so many to choose from and there's so many different forms of care that are required depending on the different types of species. You guys, you know, everybody loves seeing those beautiful uh, Marilinella tricolor. They're absolutely exceptional isopods, super, super colorful active during the day. Sounds like a win, win, win. But they're not as easy as some of the other isopods that we need to kind of start out with. They're also very, very pricey. So let's get our basics first and then eventually work our ways towards that. Or, you know, the rage that was so popular for so long and still, they're just as wonderful as they were then is like all the Kubaris species, like the rubber duckies. Absolutely everybody loves the Kubaris rubber duckies. I do too. But again, they're not the absolute easiest isopod to start with. So today's video, I think we're going to deal with one particular species that I find absolutely near and dear. I think they're absolutely striking. And not only that, they're exceptionally easy to care for, and everybody can get them. So let's get to it. Today we're going to be talking about the zebra isopod, Armadillidium maculatum. Now, who, who hasn't been, into, you know, just absolutely amazed if they've gone, ever gone in the wild or even to a, a real nice zoo and seeing an absolute herd of zebras just running across the plains? Absolutely stunning animals. Well, you can have that just in a very, very diminutive form. <laughs> isopods. I think they're absolutely awesome. And this is my culture of my zebra isopods, Armadillidium maculatum. So let's, today, let's do kind of a species profile. Let's talk a bit more depth about this particular animal, how you can take care of it, how you can go about getting it, so you have good success with it. Let's get into it. That's right, that's right. Now my tubs that I use, as you guys have seen in many of my other videos, and I'll put some links up in the video as well. I use these really, really nice thick walled, there are four locks on each one. I think they're absolutely great. Then I ordered some vents from roundvent.com and I have them both on either side. But I also do somewhat put a little bit of ventilation where the lids do not nest because as you guys see, I nest all my uh, underneath the different stands. This one is in very, very much need of being reset. And the reason I say that is you can see a lot of the organa organic matter is already spent. You can see and that's almost all just solid frass. So this one's gonna definitely need to be reset. I'll post a video about that about called Culture Crash. And we'll discuss that a little bit further. But uh, this is an armadillidium species. So primarily their diet is going to be decaying vegetable matter. They don't really have a high level of protein needs, unlike, say, some of the porcilios and such. So these guys are very, very easy to feed on a diet primarily of leaf litter. And everybody can access leaf litter. We're in the fall season right now. And you can see leaf litter here. You can see them all throughout it in various forms of decay. And it's very, very easy. I also source mosses in the wild, as you guys have seen in other videos, and lichens and different things like that. And those are all incredible food sources for these isopods. I also am a very, very big fan of the Supreme Gecko, uh, Ovali and Nanette Kern from Milwaukee. Absolutely love their food. Uh, now they've actually made their food uh, a little bit different recently. I have not tried the new form, but they've actually split it up and made uh, more of a vegetable-based one more targeting species such as these and then they've also made one that is a bit more higher in protein for those species that may require higher protein so but basically the enclosure has got a nice organic loamy soil mix uh, i do add a fair bit of uh you know different types of things like rotting bark white rot uh woods uh carbon or charcoal and things like that things to offer some aeration i do add a, a broken down form of cuddle or not cuddle calcium into the mix as well. This happens to be a cuddle bone that I also use to supplement calcium. But I do use calcium carbonate, as you guys have seen. It's sold in the reptile industry as reptile sand. And I find it's very, very good. That's why I'm making sure that not only is calcium always available, but that the stability or pH of the, of the substrate 
doesn't all of a sudden crash with the buildup of too much fresh. So the you know very very loamy organic soil mix, very deep leaf litter bed. There's another cuddle bone there, but as you can see, this one really is in need of being reset. But these are absolutely striking isopods. They're so easy to care for. I have supplemented using cucumbers and squash and carrots and stuff periodically, but. Isopods, I think people people that don't really have success with some of the basic species of isopods really are, are reading into it far too deep. And they're actually, they're, they're, they're very, very easy to care for. And they're animals that basically can be left alone for long, long periods of time, as long as those needs are still met. Now, my variant of Armadillidium is Armadillidium maculatum is the France version. So apparently uh, my, my isopods have been line bred to show those nice, clean, defined stripes. Obviously, this is a, is a species that could require uh, a fair bit of culling. You see that one that's running there? He's got broken stripes right in the center there. That's one that should probably be culled uh, to improve the genetics or the quality of the, of the nice striping pattern. And the France variant, the one that's here, is also apparently supposed to be one of the largest variants of this particular species of isopod. This one is my culture of the yellow form or high yellow form of the same species. I believe it was developed in Europe, don't quote me on that, but they call it the yellow zebra. Now the problem with this one for me particularly is that it does more so than the, the white ones. This requires an awful lot more diligence in the culling department to ensure that you're getting that integrity of those beautiful, beautiful yellow zebras. And also you can see some, you know, with the broken up lines. So my line when it came to me was a very, very high quality from a, from a German individual. And they're very, very impressive. And they were very expensive. However, I just have not had the time to sit here and individually cull the specimens out. So I've just kind of let nature take its course. I do keep them separate from my other ones. So I do not have intermingling. But uh, I, I am very not as diligent in regards to the actual culling process. I think they're I think they're fascinating nonetheless. I think they're a nice color variation. But if they're left on their own, a lot of that yellow kind of fades and turns to kind of a, a limey green on some of them, uh, which I also find attractive. And some of them will revert back to the, the white. But regardless, I still think it's an absolutely fascinating species or cut line bread color form of this amazing, amazing isopod. So very, very easy to care for. My routine is I actually use reverse osmosis water and I check all my cultures once a week. And I, I check for not necessarily do they get watered every single week, but I check for, for moisture content within the substrate. And I check, uh, you know, make sure that the amenities like the leaf litter and the mosses and stuff, uh, that they have a, a wet corner. Uh, and then I also make sure that all the other products like the calcium sources and everything are available to them. This one seems to be most of their moss is gone. So that is something that we're going to have to address right away. But otherwise, a very, very simple, easy to care for species. Now, Armadillidium maculatum, this species here, is probably, in my opinion, one of the absolute best isopods for starting out. The Armadillidiums are much more forgiving in regards to moisture content or overwatering, Their dietary needs are much easier to meet. Calcium needs are about the same, depending on, on the species, other species we've talked about. Kubaras tend to like a much higher level of calcium. But this species is just also so readily available at all reptile shows, expos, any vendors that are selling isopods. A good quality zebra isopod would be very hard to beat. Let me, know, let me know what you guys think. Is that in your top 10? Is that one of the best isopods for beginners to start with? Do you love that black and white contrast? What's your favorite isopod? I don't know. What's your best beginner isopod? I don't know. Leave me something down in the comments. Give me a thumbs up. Share the video. Anything you can do to help, I greatly appreciate it. If you guys like me doing these kind of species profiles, got lots of isopods. We could easily do that. So until next time, my friends, you guys take care. Cheers. Bye.